Like you don't have to do it. Like if you don't like writing, like don't do it. If you're not good at writing, I don't know, like choose if you want to do it or not. But um, if you don't like video, right? Like don't do it. The thing about it is like short form video, the reason I am so gung ho about it right now is not just because I personally love it. I just can see like, hey, if you want to grow on these apps right now, this is the best way to do it. What's up, fam? We're back for another episode of the Traffic Sales and Profits Show. My name is Lamar Tyler. I'm your host. And if you are looking for ways to grow your business or to generate wealth, you're in the right spot. And today I got another amazing guest, Casey Brown, founder of Digital Kairos in the building. What's up, Casey? I'm excited. What's up? You look excited, too. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, your excitement <laughs> like, looks like, making me I'm excited. Ready to go. <laughs> that would really fire me up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, use these intros. See, it is longer form content. No. We do introductions. No. And I'm we, used to write to it. Yeah, right. We, we, can, we can segue a little bit here. You know, flow a little bit. I love it. Um, but I'm glad to have you on, right? I, I was saying that because you are a short form content expert. <laughs> Um, and let's talk about like what is short form content, people that don't know. Yeah, so short form content is, some people call it a TikTok, some people call it an Instagram reel, some people call it a YouTube short. It's basically just a vertical video, usually like 30, 45 seconds. Some platforms let you do it longer um, with some text overlay, some GIFs, something, right? But whatever you would consider your traditional like TikTok style video is what we consider like short form content. And it feels like over the last few years, if you've been on social, you've seen <laughs> videos like this, yes, right? Yes. And it kind of did re originated with TikTok. Yes. I'm so, assuming, right? And well, did. it originated. Okay, let's go. With Vine. I okay, don't know yes, if you yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I know that I might have Vine. been outside of your time. I don't yeah, know, yeah. But yeah. Vine was, was. I went there, didn't participate. <laughs> <laughs> Vine was like the starter of it, right? Before his time. Um, it was also an Elon company, so he had Vine, but um, originated, we could say, in this day and age with TikTok. Okay. Yeah. So okay. was it, from your perspective, just the other platform saying, hey, we're seeing something taking off there and we're just duplicating and copying that? Because now you can't get away from it, right? Yeah. From YouTube to Instagram to Facebook. Yeah. You know, it's, it's everywhere along the path. Yeah, so I think all the platforms are starting to realize, like, hey, video is king. Like, video is is what this is. Instagram was really prioritizing video, um, lives, different things like this. Um, Facebook as well. But TikTok came in and really pioneered like this style of video that took over the person's entire screen, mm -hmm. right? And so like they're not looking at other like suggested videos or different things. They have their full attention. Plus, it's really like only it's 30 seconds, right? Or 45 seconds. Um, so I think TikTok really like got deep into like what human psychology was and put out the perfect video for humans and the time of the scroll. Um, and then every other platform just kind of, you know, took that and, and made their own thing. As you were saying, the only thing I can think of is China. China got, <laughs> China got, China got into the American psychology. Yeah, it was like. So it's, I mean. <laughs> oh, we supposed to go there, my bad, my bad. Hey. <laughs> it look like I, um, So background. here's the thing, right? It was actually funny. I could talk about this, I think, on the, this <laughs> platform, but TikTok actually, so I started creating on TikTok in June of 2021, which is actually like pretty late mm. um, for me. So we started working on there in March of 2020. I didn't actually myself start creating on there until June, um, but I grew relatively fast, that's perspective, but TikTok actually reached out to me to like do a partnership, but I would only be able to talk about like TikTok, right? And so mm. even when you bring up China and stuff, I have opinions about it and I can like actually freely talk about it. Um, but I used to make the statement in January, like, hey, TikTok won't be here in 2024, right? Or TikTok yeah. won't be here next year. Um, the only reason I really made that statement was so people would stop asking me. Like, <laughs> so like is TikTok going to be here? Um, no, it won't be here. But every other platform is just like TikTok. So mm. like, what are we going to you know, do about that? That's good. And you know, something that's interesting <clears throat> is now we've started to see other platforms kick up that are not video, or at least not mm -hmm. yet, right? We saw Spill. Yeah. I like to put an S on that joint, call it Spills. Spills. <laughs> that, that people, like people <laughs> they ear chase, they ear chase. Like somebody right now is watching and they are mad. He's like, it's new S on yeah. Spill. I like to call it Spills, right? <laughs> it just is what it is. Uh, but Spill, um, now we've seen um, Threads, yep. right? Um, so it's, it's interesting because whenever 
Uh, and I think it's a good reminder, right? Everything's full cycle. Yes. So whenever everything is going this way, then eventually somebody breaks through the other way and it's like, oh my God, yes. this is new. But it's not even new most of the time. Yeah. It's just going back to how things originally were. And what's, on the other side of the, of I mean, on the other side of that, right? So like, yes, the written content platforms are coming back, but even on the video side, you're seeing like really long form YouTubes, right? I don't know yeah. if you, like when I'm working, I'll turn on like a podcast. Some of these podcasts now are like two and a half hours. They're right? like TV shows. Yes. It's like and watching so, a TV show or exactly. movie. Exactly. Yep. And so you're seeing even like longer form like video. And so I think you have this middle ground with like short form and then two other like opposite spectrums of like this really, really long form like YouTube videos or whatever. And then shorter form kind of like mm -hmm. content digest with like threads and stuff like that like we haven't gone full blog posts yet yeah. we're still doing short form like written content um but i think you have lots of different variety right now you know and, and that's interesting as you say that because it makes me think about the diversity of how people like to consume content and what they like to consume like tv right yep. um <clears throat> you know i'm a little generational difference here. So <laughs> when, I was, VHS. when I was growing up, you know, we have all these channels y'all got now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You flip yeah. that little knob around, you get back up to the top pretty quick. Um, but then you got cable, now you got apps. Yeah. Now, you know, we got a convo app. Like, so you can find pretty much a channel that's dedicated to just what you want. Yeah. But, you know, I always feel like social is different because the algorithm, even if you find something close to what you want, they still can point the algorithm back and be like, hey, yeah. Yeah, you know, you like that page, you yeah. want that stuff. Yeah. But nah, let me show you something different. Yeah. Um, what's your thought about like it being so many different types of content out there that people connect to? <clears throat> Will the networks even let us connect to the type of things that we want to connect to? Yeah, I think that, I think so. I think the best platforms will allow you to connect with the content you want, right? And so like, I hate to go back to TikTok, but TikTok, um, has also pioneered a really great algorithm. Like mm -hmm. they just, they know what you want. Now, um, people have thoughts about that, right? But uh, TikTok, at least at the time of this taping, also has like one of the highest like watch times for an app, right? Like users go on there and can stay on there for like 45 minutes or something wow. on average, right? And it's so crazy to think about too because a video on there is like 20 seconds long, 10 exactly. seconds long, right? Um, but the algorithm is so advanced to understand like, hey, Casey, like, Whenever we show Casey this type of content, she stops, watch, and like engages and shares it with a friend, right? Like, so clearly, like she likes this type of content, you know. Um, so I think the best algorithms will get there. Presently, at the time of this taping, the one thing I even hate about Threads is that it doesn't have an algorithm for me. So I go on there. It's wild. And it's I'm wild. Seeing, it's wild in a cool way. It's I'm wild. seeing people talk about marketing <laughs> to. King of Diamonds. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's happening over there. You know what's interesting? Threads. I went out there this morning. I said, let me let me put something on thread. So I go out there this morning. And in the morning, yeah. it's like, that's where all the thinkers are on there, right? Yeah. So I try to type something. I ended up just typing like, I was like, I can't think of nothing profound to type. Because I was like, it was like a lot of competition <laughs> yeah. to break through in there in yeah. the morning. But yeah, like I get there a little late afternoon. It's, it it's just a be a mix-up. It, it's, it's a mix-up of everything. <laughs> yeah. And, but you know what's interesting to me now, too, is that every time a new social platform comes, there's like a mad rush to figure out how do we monetize? You know, like, how do we monetize? Like, what, what's the play? And, you know, like, like, like even that culture. So it's yeah. all these subcultures inside of the culture yeah. of every network. Yeah. Um, that is interesting. But but I'll say, this is my, this is my last piece on threads. Uh, Cause they ain't paying us out here, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they got enough. Friends. They got enough users. Uh, my last thing is one of the things I've seen a lot from a lot of my peers are people saying they like it because it reminds them of earlier days mm. of social media when social yeah. media was simpler and it was just about yeah. getting your thoughts, getting your feelings, like whatever out yeah. into the marketplace yeah. or into the plat. Not even the marketplace, just into a platform to share your thoughts. Yeah. Um, so for me to be interested to see where it actually. Where goes, goes yeah. and where it actually ends up. Yeah, I, th I said this, and I think I posted this on Facebook like last week, but the thing about all these social platforms, especially now there's diversity, right? Mm -hmm. I think that what creators, and I feel like we're all creators in a sense, what creators need to like understand is like their skill level and like enjoyment level, right? Like mm -hmm. a new platform comes out, like you don't have to do it. Like if you don't like writing, like don't do it. If yeah. you're not good at writing, I don't know, like choose if you want to do it or not, but um, if you don't like video, right? Like, don't do it. The thing about it is, like, short form video, the reason I am so gung ho about it right now is not just because 
I personally love it. Mm -hmm. I just can see like, hey, if you want to grow on these apps right now, this is the best way to do it, mm -hmm. right? That doesn't mean that you have to do it. There's people that are still like bloggers right now that still make money, right? Um, Alex Hermosi, people love to bring him up, but Alex Hermosi is just good at video, right? Um, I think he is actually pretty good at like short form written, mm -hmm. but he's good at video, you know? And so like he wins there. Gary Vee is good at video. He's good at talking. He's good at being on video. He wins there. You don't have to do it though. You know? Yeah, that's good. One of, one of the things I used to, uh, since me and Ronnie started as bloggers, one of the things I used to always tell our blogging peers back then was not to be bloggers mm. and not to view themselves as bloggers, but view themselves as content creators. Yeah. And a blog was just a vehicle. Yeah. And I felt like a lot of them who had built business around blogging, their businesses died mm. because that's how, that was like the identity they had. They put yeah. the identity on it. Hey, I'm a blogger. Yep. So when social came, it really was, uh, Facebook was really the blog killer. Because yep. what happened was we would blog all of the content conversation, community, all happened on our sites. When Facebook rolled up, mm. even if people still reading your blog, they would go back to Facebook and comment. Wow. So like literally you went from like 20, 30, like hundreds of comments on a hot post yeah. to like it's 20, 30, hundreds of comments inside a Facebook thread mm -hmm. and you're getting all the traffic, yeah. but you're not getting none of the community. Yeah. And then eventually they cut, they cut the traffic off too. Yeah. It was like, you want something, you got to post it That's here. Fair. But that killed a lot of businesses off and people that were thriving at the time because I felt like they just had their identity off just a bit. Mm. So I love how you say, right, hey, like, yeah, you know, like show from video just went to right now because that's what's working right now. You know, I like it, but always keeping an eye on the future and where things are going and what's going to be working in the, yeah. in the future, not just kind of tying your, exactly. your raft or something exactly. that, you know, that you know it got a time frame. Yeah. It I was having cycle. this conversation with um, a friend, Kim Lewis, but... I was telling her, like, if I feel like any entrepreneur that does not, business owner, entrepreneur, like whatever you want to call yourself, executive, mm -hmm. um, that doesn't see themselves as a creator is at a, like, super disadvantage. Mm -hmm. I feel that, like, business owners, um, again, whatever you call yourself, entrepreneurs, should focus on creating. I believe that to win in this game, i.e., like, build wealth, whatever you consider winning, but to build wealth in this this present day that we're in, it's all about attention. Mm. Uh, I think Alex Hermosi put it like this, like a hundred years ago, if you wanted to be, build real money, you had to like invest in oil. Now, or like be in oil. Now it's the game of like attention. Mm. Whoever has the most attention, like builds will real wealth. Mr. Beast, Kylie Jenner, The Rock, like all these people. And so like even all business owners, be good operators, be good, you know, presenters and, and team, people and managers, but like, if you don't see yourself at a creator, I believe your business is at a real disadvantage. Mm. What if they, what if they just say, that's not my jam, right? Yeah. Can they have, do you think a creator internally that can still represent the company? I do. I do think you can have one. I do think- Cause some people just ain't good, Casey. You gotta be real. <laughs> <laughs> I think some people, I think that maybe people, I think all people have a story and they just need practice at sharing their story and sharing like who they are. I have not, I don't meet a lot of people that just don't have stories, that don't have wisdom to share, that haven't gone through highs and low in the business. I need to introduce right? you to some people. <laughs> I, got, I got some, no, I'm playing, I'm playing. Look, somebody, somebody's watching, like, is he talking about me? It's, it's yeah. A joke, it's a joke. I, so we do work with some businesses who do put a creator in place, but I think the best person to talk about your business is the founder, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if that really is not your skill at all, written, video, like you can't do any of it, um, somebody should be doing it. Mm, that's good. And you, you made a point, right? Like a lot of people just need coaching or structure or, you know, I, I think a lot of times when we start out, people would say, we used to natural doing this, that. And I'd be like, not really. I just got a framework for doing it. Yeah. And if I got a framework and I just know like, hey, yeah. I need these things in a framework, it makes yeah. it exponentially easier than just having to wing everything, especially exactly. if that's really just not your thing. I mean, most people too also start their business, most people start their business to impact somebody, right? To impact a customer. And I think that if people switch their mindset to like, okay, I'm just posting this video and like, how do I look? And like all these other vanity metrics people think about to saying, these people that I want to impact, I could put out a 30 second video and like reach a million of them from my phone. Like mm -hmm. I'm selfish if I don't put out content because I'm not actually impacting people. If like we made that shift to think about the impact that we could have um, in this world and change it for the better, I think that would push also a lot more people to, to create. Mm. Very good, very good. Now, um, one more question I had about short form video. I've heard you specifically say creating it is a different muscle. 
Yeah. So you could be great <laughs> over here, but not great over here, and great over here, but not great over there. Yeah. Can we talk about that a little bit? Like, what's what's different about short form? Yeah. So short form, and we've been talking about this a lot internally. Uh, I think about the short form speaker. If you're a six or a seven figure entrepreneur, a black business owner, and you don't know where to go, if you feel like you're alone, if you feel like you don't have anyone to talk to that gets how you feel or gets the pressures of being a business owner in today's climate, guess what we do? I want to introduce you to the Traffic Sales and Profit Mastermind. Now in the TSP Mastermind, we have a 12 month program that's going to help you reach your next six, seven or eight figures in business over the course of a year. Now along that year, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching, we have accountability, we have community, we have live events and everything you need in order to reach the next level. For more information, visit us at www.trafficsalesandprofit.com. And it's so crazy mm. that that is probably a name. Also, we're just coming up with all these names because this is like a new field, right? Yeah. But the people that I see are winning a lot in short form can speak in short form. And it is a muscle, and this is hilarious because I don't even have the muscle, but like it's a muscle that most black folks especially just don't have. Like we, we like telling, we're griots out here. We like, like we, telling stories. <laughs> stories, ad libs, like it's church culture, right? Like the pastor don't like it's truly like the pastor sermon is just like be grateful for what you have. But we sit there for two hours, like listening to all these stories, ad libs, and it's like, okay, all you told me was to be grateful for what I have, right? Um, and so I think the ones that really went in short form can speak in short form, right? Um, also the structure of the video generally goes something like this, like hook somebody in, right, um, with a really strong hook, usually an I statement after that, so mm -hmm. a personal story, right, and then a you statement following that I statement, so something applicable for the viewer, right, so like really fun hook, uh, I talked to my employee's dead mother, personal story, and then a you statement sort of type of thing at the end is usually the structure, but before you get into that structure, just try to become a better short form speaker. Yeah, I'm not telling that story again. <laughs> on the backstory of that, Casey had me telling the story about <laughs> this dude lied about his mother being dead just to get days off work. Put that on, that thing ran a million views. All the comments, I don't know if you ever read a comment on that post. I never. All the I'd, comments, I'd try to look all the it. comments is like, what kind of boss are you? <laughs> He had a lot to get to. I'm like, it ain't no kind of boss in the world gonna make me lie about my mama being yeah. here. Like, like, what's wrong with you people? I'm I will lying. say the ones, the videos that get the most views have the most like negative comments. Really? Yeah. And okay. it's just a muscle that people have to build. Like every day, I made a post about this yesterday, but every day there's a call like, take this down, like bad comments, bad comments. Um, but it's just the it's just the the game that we live in. You know? Yeah, that that, <laughs> that is true. Yeah. I like I'm thinking about like my stuff that got the, the most it's the most negative push, comments. And like it, it Ashley Kirkwood true. and I put out a video like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. It's at like two million views. Everybody's in there calling her dumb. She she can't be smart. All this stuff like she's talking about going to law school and stuff. And it's just like eighty percent of the comments are that. 20% are good, and I think she's already gotten like two mastermind people from that video. Wow. You know? So it's like, can you deal with 80% of people yeah. calling you whatever? If you know who you are, it shouldn't sway exactly. you that much, but 20% of people actually finding you being you know, impacted by you. Yeah, that's good. You know, you know when I look at that stuff, I'll be like, this is stupid. I'm yeah. like, these people are stupid. <laughs> I just got to keep, keep going yeah, about this. Yeah. But you know, I wonder if she's, like what I used to like to do in situations like that is I would do a uh, us versus them. Mm. And my us versus them is that, like when something like that happened, I would throw, it would make me excited. Yes. Because then what I would do is I would take it and I would go to my community yep. and be like, look at what they saying. Yes. And then my community, they get the pitchforks out. Yes. And they like, here we yes. go, right? It's <laughs> a huge thing. Like people love rallying behind a leader too. Exactly. Right? And it, so like, especially as a leader, when you can like show that, use that. Um, when you can take a stance as a leader, people love like rallying yeah. behind their leader. I, I'll never forget, we had a, uh, a Facebook page for Traffic Sales and Profit. And I didn't even know that people could leave reviews on there. Mm. <laughs> but it was like three like just racist reviews on there. Yeah. Out of a, and I was like, you can leave reviews on the page? Yeah. But I was like, oh, here we go. That's we about to have some reviews, right? Yeah. So I went to the community and was like, look at what they doing. <laughs> I can't believe they would say this about us. And literally in 24 hours, we had like 75, 80 reviews. Yeah. And it was all these great reviews of how we impacted people inside the Track Sales and Profit community. Yep. That it had the people, it wasn't even people I had direct clients, it wasn't clients, it wasn't mastermind clients, it, wasn't clients. it was just like just people in the community awesome. that were just pouring into us, that were supporting us. Yeah. But without the negativity or the negative comments, I never would have had the chance to rally them and actually mm -hmm. bring the pot. If I just I went that. to the groups like, hey, y'all, 
if TSP impacts you, leave a review. Yeah. Definitely. It might have been four or five people. Yeah. It would have been 20 people talking about they going to do it, yep. but never get around to doing yep. it. But um, yeah, that, that us versus them. I, I love, love that. that. I, I love, love that. that. All right. So I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I want to go back for a second. Yeah. How did you even get into all of this? Yeah. So I'll try to make this short. Yeah. Let's test you. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I don't even have the muscle. Um, but I grew up um, just always really interested in business and marketing. Um, and so I started my first business, um, first real business at 16, but that was all on Instagram. And this is before mm. Instagram had DMs, had story, like all you do is post pictures and leave comments. And so I was a sneakerhead at that time. And I was selling socks. So like, these custom socks, Nike Elite socks were like a big thing back then. Um, and so I was selling socks all through social. Um, I probably sold around like $300,000 worth of socks in the first six months of that wow. business. All, again, no ads, no, nothing, just posting pictures. Um, and so that's when I really started building this love for like building product and then leveraging social to scale it, right? Like I was just, I had never met these people. I was just in my bedroom printing these socks and then would ship them off. Um, but that, I never really saw it as a business. It was just the side thing that I started doing at 16 to like have some extra money. Um, I did the same thing in college, um, throughout college, and then ads started popping up. And so I started running ads for people. I then went into corporate because my mom was like, you need to get a good job, a real job. Uh, so I went into corporate, again, always running ads and doing stuff on the side. But in corporate, I started working at companies like, um, I always say Stripe because I think mo most people mm -hmm. of this audience know what Stripe is. But I found myself with these companies like growing startups. And how we were growing startups was leveraging digital ads and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to 2021, we open up um, our agency. Uh, two months after we open up our agency, uh, iOS 14.5 happens. And... All the agency owners that I know go out of business because that really shook up the agency world. But what I saw was companies that were winning were using this like newer style of content. Like they just had really good content and then they were using a lot of short form content mm -hmm. in their ads, right? And so then I just started going on this trek to say like, how can we help our clients get better results on their ads by making better content? And so every company or how I operate in the world is like I have theses and hypotheses. And so the hypothesis that I live with right now, which could change at any day, but it's just like the businesses that win have attention. How to get attention is through content, um, better content, right? Mm -hmm. And so then that's kind of how we have migrated into really focusing on short form right now. Excellent. Yeah. So for you and your company, um, does it ever concern you, you ever worry that you're in such a fastly changing industry. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I mean, because I mean, it, it like things just shift. It can change tomorrow. Overnight, right? Yeah. It's like Elon Musk comes back and it's like yeah. the thread's killer, right? Yeah. And it's like he got something in his bag. Yeah. But, you know, like things change so fast. Like, does that have a concern you as, as a business owner? It doesn't concern me. It excites me. And okay, I that's think good. that's why I love corporate. Again, like I started the agency two months after we started. Ads is no longer like you can't target on ad like mm -hmm. all this stuff I have been doing for seven years you can no longer do it right. Um, the thing that we remain true to is saying like okay what does the market look like and then how do we help our clients adapt? Um, and so people right now see me as like a TikTok short form person. Next year it could be a long form person, and mm -hmm. next year it could be a Threads person. Like the one thing that I will say true to is saying how can we help our companies, our businesses grow online? Like that's my main focus. Hmm. If somebody's watching and they're saying, okay, I think I want to work with Digital Kairos, like what are, what are the things that you can help them directly with? So we have like two agencies right now. Um, we have a traditional like advertising or ad agency, Facebook, Google, um, TikTok, Pinterest, all the ad platforms, email, SMS, and then content agencies. So and they're, in our content agency, if you're a personal brand, we work with short form, um, long form, stuff like that. If you're a product brand, we work and manage your influencers. So we do a lot of UGC, mm. user-generated content, and work with influencers and stuff to make better content, to push you organically, to help your paid ads um, also decrease. I love it. How can they get a hold of you? Um, usually on Instagram is my main platform, um, at Case the Ace. Um, but also if you just go to digitalkairos.com, um, you can fill out some forms and stuff there. Perfect. And any last words of advice for... You got a business owner that's saying, you know, I haven't created content, but Casey is saying, I'm at a disadvantage if yeah. I'm not. Like, how can they get started and just get moving? 
Um, so one thing, pick up your phone. If you have an Android, like, so this is the camera. If you have an Android, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, pick up your iPhone. <laughs> I knew this was about to get shady. I knew when you was like, if you got an Android, I don't you smile. like. I don't. I don't know how to help pass the Android part. But uh, with the iPhone users, pick it up. Turn on your camera. You know they just... got the internet on these Android. Like, you acting like, you, you, I you acting like they got a sundial. I, like, I, like, love... ah. I will say I've converted some really heavy Android users to iPhone. <laughs> I won't say their names on this here platform, um, but I have converted. But if you have an iPhone, iPhone cameras are pretty good. And just start creating. Um, see it as like a mandatory thing. Like mm -hmm. you have to do your taxes. You have to pay your employees. You have to create content. Every day? Every day. Every day. I think that's only how you get better at it. We have a, um, a saying internally, like, post to perfect. Like, how can I get better at making free throws if I don't go out there and shoot 100 free throws? That's good. I, I did a previous episode with one of my good friends, uh, Deneen Milner. So Deneen Milner has written over a dozen New York Times bestsellers, 30-something mm. <clears throat> total published books, and she is a uh, ghostwriter. So I always say... Uh, she's your, you know, your favorite celebrity's book that you read is a that. black woman behind it, Deneen Milner, right? I so uh, I used to ask Deneen, like, like, how do you get so good at writing? And she said, because I write every day. Yeah. And she said, not just when I got a book due, not when just a publisher yeah. got a timeline, but like every day I'm working on that muscle yeah. of just writing to get better. Yeah. And I'm just like, like in my notebook, in my pad. So you're saying, yeah. well, content is the same exact It's the same thing. And I think the one thing that people get wrong is seeing it as a sales engine. Like it mm. can produce sales, right? But for some people, it's a community connector, right? Some people are use short form and it just like is a place for their community to engage with them. Some people is to find net new followers. Some people do go viral and make sales, right? But as long as you're putting content out there, um, you will see the impacts of it, I believe within a two year window. So also play the long game. I love it. I love it. The long game. So there we go, y'all. Another episode with, right, another expert. That was Casey Brown, Digital Kairos, talking about playing a long game, using short form content to your advantage in your business and making sure that you get started when today. The worst thing you can do is say, hey, you know what? That sounds great. And I'm going to start on Monday because Monday ain't going to come. So get started today. Think about what you can do and how you can implement what you learn. And don't forget, we'll see you next week with another amazing episode of the Traffic Sales and Profit Show. The Combo, your home for conversations on Black entrepreneurship and wealth. Available on your favorite platforms.